All right, everyone. Welcome back to Adobe Live. I hope everyone is doing wonderful today. I see so many familiar faces in the chat. Uh, welcome in Keith. Welcome Chad. Welcome Sam. Uh, welcome da da Daniel Flores is in the chat. Hello, Daniel. Never seen this guy before. I don't know who that is. Justin, Cornell, it's good to see all of you folks. Um, I hope that everyone can hear us and see us okay. I know that we had a few technical issues yesterday and unfortunately we weren't able to hang out with you folks, but we're back today and I'm super excited uh, to get this party started. Uh, so for those of you who don't know, my name is Voodoo Val and I'm gonna be host and artist for this awesome design off segment. Uh, and I'm joined by my brand new friend, uh, Delta Tango Mike, or Daniel Flores. How are you, Daniel? I am always good. Thank you for inviting me and letting me hang out with you. I admire all the artists who get down on screen digitally and traditionally. So excited. Uh, I, I'm pretty pumped about what we've got planned today. As you folks know, we always have a new theme uh, and everything that we do for the weekly design off. Um, and today our theme is going to be myths and legends. Uh, I'm super excited to jump into it. And I, I want to do like kind of a quick reminder and a breakdown of how all of this stuff works, just in case there's some folks in chat that have never been here and have never participated. Uh, so first of all, you guys are all uh, invited to create artistically with us today. And it does not matter mm -hmm. if you're not a painter or an illustrator um, uh, like DTM and myself, uh, if you are a hand letterer, if you are, uh, uh, maybe you're a UI UX designer, um, mm -hmm. if you uh, design logos and do like a lot of graphic design, you guys can create anything along with us according to our theme. Uh, and I'm, I'm gonna pull up a hashtag here pretty soon where you folks can share it because towards the end of the broadcast today, we are actually going to uh, pull up Twitter and Instagram and check out anything you folks made with us uh, mm, today right. um, and we're gonna jump into it but first why don't you why don't you give a little intro of yourself DTM and uh, tell everybody a little bit about you and the kind of artwork that you make just in case there's familiar or unfamiliar faces uh, in the chat today oh I just I just lost your audio can I I could hear you a second ago. I didn't, I didn't mute on my end. Let me see. Hmm. Let me see if I bump over here. One moment. Yeah, you, you cut out mid sentence. Let's see. How about that? Hmm. One second, folks. I am going to get a little head bob going for you, do a little dance for those of you waiting for the audio coming back. <laughs> Let's see. Hmm. Can you guys, is it just me? Or can you guys in chat not hear him either? One second. Let's see, I still can't hear ya. You can hear me fine. All right, but not not uh, not Daniel. I'm gonna check here real quick. Is your, for your um, audio settings in the Zoom call, do you have your headphones or your, your mic selected? Hmm. 
Justin says, sing us a song. Oh no, I don't think that's happening. <laughs> And your mic is registering on your computer. Let me try adding a, let's see. I'm gonna try adding, re-adding a microphone for you. Oh, did we get him back? I'm here. Oh, I'm there we here. go. There I'm we go. Here. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. The show will go on, <laughs> even if we have to do some kind of magical ritual and get this thing going. I swear this will happen. We got it. Okay. <laughs> All right. You were introducing yourself. Yes. My name is DTM Delta Tango Mike. Uh, my real name is Dan or Daniel, and uh, but my artist name is Delta Tango Mike. I've been drawing all my life. I do not recall a time when I was not drawing. And uh, I've just been in love with seeing what comes out of my hands from the days of crayons and pencils to now digital on the Surface, Antique, the iPad. Uh, basically, anything that uh, I see around me is inspiration for my art. And growing up, it was all comic books. And of course, my culture, because I'm born and raised in East LA. There's a ton of murals everywhere that tell the story of the Aztecs, talks about uh, the Mexican experience. And so all of that was fuel for my imagination and uh, for trying to see what it would look like if I was to be the one drawing it. And so I've been drawing for a long time. I enjoy every little bit of it. And any chance I get to draw and get paid, it's like the perfect intersection for my life. <laughs> yes, yes, I agree uh, 100%. Um, so I'm going to jump over to our dual stream uh, view here. Uh, and as you guys can see, I've got our theme, myths and legends, put up here. Um, and then I also have our hashtag Adobe Live Design Off so you folks can draw along with us and uh, and share um, any drawings or any, any graphic art, any hand lettering, any UI, UX designs, whatever you folks mm -hmm. decide you want to create mm -hmm. along with us, you can share it there. And towards the end of the stream, we are going to take a look at it. Um, now, I, I've decided I'm going to go the Egyptian route today and I'm going to do um, a cool kind of portrait illustration of... Uh, Anubis. I was kind of, I was, I was debating between Anubis or Saubek because those are two of my favorites um, when it comes to uh, ancient Egyptian mythology. Um, mm -hmm. And it's something that I have always loved uh, to, to explore, to read about, um, to write about, uh, and, and all that stuff. So that's where I'm going to go. Um, what are you going to be working on today, Dan? I'm going to be working on my favorite character of all time. Uh, my, myself. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. And uh, and uh, my Aztec god. So I've been a student of Aztec mythology for a long, long time. Egyptian mythology is my second most favorite, also. And uh, and so, in the Aztec pantheon or the mythologies, you have um, a si long series of gods, but then each god also has several representations several mm -hmm. so depending on what what is what's happening what kind of event is happening uh they take on a different persona or character and that's how people are right when we're happy we're one way when we're sad we're kind of a different way and uh and so this god his name is this mm -hmm. and uh and one of his um his personifications is the god of destiny and so very young in my life i um I believe in myself. I've been confident with myself, and uh, and I, I always felt that the person you see in the mirror is the one who's in charge of your destiny. Mm -hmm. And so the Aztec god of destiny, it is. That's Captain Foca. That's amazing. So, <laughs> I like to intermingle those two. Mm -hmm. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I like to intermingle those two, you know, so that I can kind of feel like I'm taking on that power. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, I think I think uh, Sobek and Anubis are. Um, kind of my favorites in that I, I mean I've always thought 
um, that Anubis was cool. I think that it's like it's it's one of the cooler looking ones, you know. So I kind of gravitated uh, towards it as, as a child. Um, but it, you know, Anubis being like the the god of lost souls and you know the afterlife and uh, and all that was mm-hmm. something that I really loved to read about um, and stuff. And then um, with Saw Sobek being uh, kind of like the god of the Nile and uh, I guess like fertility and um, kind of I guess uh, how do I how do I explain it? I'm trying to I'm gonna I'm gonna actually pull this up and make sure I, I get all this right because there's a lot of different facets. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, to to Sabek. Um Yeah, uh, bringing, after, bringing yeah. fertility to the land and kind of breathing mm-hmm. life into into the area because the Nile is like that one strip of serious water through uh, the area that was like the birthplace of so much life historically, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, and uh, I've also always loved uh, giant reptiles and everything. So Sabek for <laughs> for those that don't know is the um the god with the head of a crocodile and then um uh anubis is typically portrayed uh with the head of a jackal um and so i always thought that those those two were were super neat um and i thought that they stood for some pretty dope stuff as well um so definitely uh, my go-to and i think that savik also uh, after the weighing of the heart if it's too heavy i think savik eats it mm-hmm Yes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> mm. I love that you know this stuff. This is so great. I knew we were going to vibe. <laughs> oh, yeah. You got to watch out for that afterlife. Uh, it's serious business. Yeah, it is. Yeah, uh-huh. it is. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, I uh, I used to read a lot. Um, in, in terms of um, history and mythology, I really love to hear about olden times, times that are way so far removed that, you know, it, it, it reads like a comic book. Yeah, it's a different world. And, uh, yeah, it's a whole different world. And so, yeah, I've always been uh, very, very interested in in uh, all this old mythology, old histories. I'm a big history um, fan. And uh, so I, I've loved all those stories. Heru, Isis, Osiris, mm-hmm. uh, um, uh, and uh, how it all, it's like a big drama and um and and each character has their strengths their weaknesses and their lessons that you learn along the way so oh yeah oh definitely. that to me has always been amazing mm-hmm. and it's always oh, yeah. it's always seemed to me like you know they represent aspects of you know things that were incredibly important to people um uh in that time and aspects of our own souls you know uh, right and 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 how they correlate to different parts of uh everyone's life you know, um, mm-hmm. and I think as a as a kid, I um, I was homeschooled a lot, and uh, oh, I I've nice. always like since before I even started drawing, like you said, you know, I don't remember a time really truly where I wasn't making art in some way. But before I was more serious about drawing, I used to love to write stories, and that was like a serious thing for me, and it still is today. Um, and so. Uh, you know, sitting as a kid with uh, history books, and um, I used to I used to read. I can't even remember what they're called. I'm sure everybody knows what I'm talking about. Those books that you could find in like a library that's like an encyclopedia of everything on one subject, and like they're like pretty big books, and they have like all the different like a collage of images on the front, and one of them could be like dinosaurs, one of them could be mm-hmm. like automobiles, or you know. And I used mm-hmm. to get the ones for ancient egypt i used to get the nice. ones for deep sea life because uh, i think <laughs> deep sea creatures are terrifying and epic um i used to get the one for insects and ah, i used yeah. to get the ones for dinosaurs because i grew up in the time of jurassic park man and <laughs> that was lit that was the that was mm-hmm. the thing to mm-hmm. be to be loving uh, when I was a kid, and so uh, I, I think all of those things truly have stuck with me into adult life as well. Yeah, it it all it all adds up to your imagination. It adds different elements to how you think and how you feel. And as an artist, as a creative person, you know you draw from those things and you build the world around you. And that's what I always liked about being an artist is that you can sit down and shut out the world, turn it off. And like, and whatever you create is what exists, and it's happening right there. In front. Yes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> I like, you know, I, I think one of the the 
reasons why I really love writing too. And I, I get to, you know, illustrate things from stories I write. I get to kind of put my own uh, artistic spin on words in that way, you know? Um, but mm-hmm. I really love creating art and doing illustrations of things that I write because writing for me in a way is a way of working through my own uh, mental questions that I have, you know, if I write Mm -hmm. about a character that's going through some stuff, you know, Mm -hmm. or Mm -hmm. write about a character that has certain uncertainties in their life, um, then I have to contemplate that thing, you Mm -hmm. know? Uh, And then when I spend the time illustrating it and I spend the time um, learning about what I'm illustrating, I find I I work through a lot of uh, um, internal questions and and things Mm -hmm. like that. I think that's what really draws me Um, to art also sometimes the only reason i need to make art though is just this sounds like it would look super cool so i'm gonna put this down (laughs) on paper you know but um i I use it in a lot of ways i wonder like when it comes to art um and i know you talked about like what inspires you and stuff but um when it comes to creating what is what what do you like what is your purpose for that like you just really want to create and share like it's in you you got to get it out um or are there like messages that you really love to share with the community and kind of get out there and 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 talk with other people like what is it for you i think it's a combination of those things and like you said um you know you you kind of ponder reality Mm -hmm. and life yeah and uh and so you you take a subject, you take an idea, and you say, well, what would it look like yeah. if uh, if I took that idea further? You know, what would it what would that uh, symbol of this thing that I that I just flashed across my head would look like if I finished it in that character personality scene follow through? And uh, and it's kind of like a discovery, a big experiment. Mm-hmm. And uh, and so to me, like that's one of the main things. As time's gone on. You know, I've gone from just trying to draw something because uh, I'm inspired by it, and then and now into drawing something that kind of tells a story, and uh, and has a, a, something to communicate with others. Yeah. And uh, and so that's where it has evolved for me, because I mean I love drawing skulls. I've, mm-hmm. I've drawn a million skulls in my life. Um, sometimes I get paid to draw gorillas, and I love drawing gorillas. And it's like, yeah, but I've already drawn that like a hundred times different ways. So if I'm going to draw another skull, what is it that I'm going to add to the story? What does it stand for? What does it mean? And so looking for meaning and looking for a message is the next step for me now. And that's where I am when I can create, come up with an idea for a project. It's like, I want to draw pencils like I'm doing a hundred pencils uh, coloring book right now. And so I want to draw some pencils. I want to draw some markers but I want it to have a bigger meaning. I want people to come in and, and any one of those meanings and things that are involved in the project be like a, like an entrance. Yeah. And, uh, and so they can come on in and then see the bigger idea as, as time goes on. But there's so many different entrances and different little elements and details that it's easy to attract the attention of somebody. And maybe that's the ego, mm-hmm. you know, a little bit of the ego, like, Hey, come and look at what I draw. You know, and, uh, <laughs> please come look at my cool stuff. Yeah, please come and look at my drawing. Come and, see it. Uh, and, yeah, and uh, and tell me how good I am. <laughs> <laughs> so I think it's an element of uh, a bit of everything that is uh, that that keeps me motivated. But but uh, I think that still to this day the biggest part is that it's the world around me is, is uh, inspires me, and we're like a like a comedian. We're interpreting the world. Um, based on the knowledge that we have so far, and uh, and then we use that bit of knowledge to go ahead and illustrate it, um, uh, and, and see what it would look like if it was up to us. Yeah. And uh, and so yeah, I'm still there to this day. Like even this idea here is like ah, I started with one way, I'm going with another, and I was like, well, let's take it further and see how it goes. You know, you never know what's gonna happen, so why not? Yeah, I agree, and we kind of talked about this before. Um, also, why, while we're chatting, um, just kind of a segue, a side note, um, I would also love to know, for those of you in chat, like, why do you guys create art? You know, mm-hmm. like, what is what is your drive? What is your inspiration? Um, what makes you sit down and, and, and think to yourself, like, I have to make this thing? What is What are your goals? Right. I'd, I'd love to know what you guys uh, think mm-hmm. about that. And also, um, Liv, I see you. 
uh, in the chat. Thank you so much for joining us. It's good to see you. Uh, also, welcome in, Stanley. Um, but you and I were kind of talking about uh, uh, previously before we began um, about uh, creating and and communicating with other artists and everything. And you said a lot of stuff that I really respected and that I really appreciated because I feel like we kind of vibe on those wavelengths about you know kind of sharing knowledge and. Um, reaching out to other people who are at different parts in, of, their, uh, of their journey um, through art and kind of showing other people um, where you are, you know, in, in your journey and kind of mm -hmm. helping to make people feel confident um, in, in their own work. Um, and uh, I think you, you have like a really positive, really great approach to um just kind of saying hey i'm doing this sketch i don't know where it's going i didn't know what was right. going to get here yeah. but like here we are you know right. um, and uh -huh. i love that yeah i think that it's important to remember that we got into art to have fun mm -hmm. right you know that that's that's the first thing that draws you into drawing and creating and i'm sorry i can't respond to people who leave comments and stuff um because i'm focused over here but uh, that's it. The main message is to enjoy ourselves and, and have a good time while, you know, still challenging ourselves and, uh, and, and learning whether it's a technique, an art style, or the medium. And, and in my life, I've found a way to make this my job. Mm -hmm. You know, make this the way uh, that I pay my bills. It'll be like kindergarten every day. Mm -hmm. uh, but at the same time, you're that uh, other people are looking to do this same kind of thing. Um, literally anything I can do to help people through that, it's, I feel yeah. like, I feel obligated because I remember a time where I had no idea what the heck I was doing and how mm -hmm, I was gonna mm -hmm, make it. And, and mm -hmm. it's really important to me um, to try and be that support and that helping hand that I didn't have in situations when I was, yeah. you know, making this my job. Um, so I love to hear that you you feel the same way about that. Um, and uh, also, just you know, so everyone knows, this is like an excellent time um, for anyone that has art questions or questions about becoming a full time artist to you know jump in and ask some questions because mm -hmm. I'm all ears. Mm -hmm. I'm ready to to kind of dive into it. Um, I think. Uh, one of the things uh, I wish that I knew or I wish I was thinking about when I when I first started um, kind of on this journey, um, and I, it's actually something that somebody asked like on Twitter recently, and I was like, ooh, I'm gonna put this down. Um, I, I, I remember kind of making art when I was, you know, kind of just jumping into this, and I was trying my my best to find an art job to find people who would like look at my art long enough to hire me and and uh and doing all this social media stuff and being new to social media was super uh stressful you know i didn't know what i was doing i would get discouraged if i didn't get likes on my posts and i didn't know <laughs> yeah. you know if anybody yeah. was looking yeah. at my art or anything mm -hmm, but uh, mm -hmm. i tell people when you first start out um and you're really trying to like make a name for yourself you're really searching for for clients and everything i would say don't ever put anything in your portfolio that you wouldn't want to get hired for Right. Um, because I put a lot of stuff in my portfolio in the beginning um, because I really, you know, it was good and I, I needed something for my portfolio. And I understand that, but I was putting the example I use all the time. I was putting nothing but like mechs and robots in mm -hmm, my mm -hmm. portfolio because that's what I had at the moment that I felt looked impressive. Um, and then nobody wanted to hire me for anything but mechs and robots. And right. spoiler alert, I hate drawing those things. <laughs> I, like I don't, I don't like it. Um, oh, so I was uh -huh. saying, you know, make sure your portfolio is tailored to the kind of work that you want to do in the industry. And yep. stop staying up till four in the morning when you know you have to get up at six o'clock. Take care of yourself. You know, I yeah. used to do that all yeah. the time. And I forgot that part of being a professional artist, part of being self-employed at all, um, uh, some of that success first comes from how kind you are to your own your own person your own body you yes. know and so and so making healthy practices and making healthy decisions actually comes a seriously long way when it comes to looking for work and, and jumping into the industry yes yeah it's a it's a it's a um, 
it's a it's a balance that you have to find. And balance doesn't mean uh, equal time. It just means that you have to know when to have those chunks of time for working, those chunks of time for sleeping, taking care of yourself, mm -hmm. stretching out because we yeah. spend lots of hours in front of this thing. And uh, uh, whether it's paper, canvas, uh, de desktops, whatever. And uh, and so you got to remember to go ahead and stretch. I'm very I'm very pleased to know that yoga exists. Oh not yes. I'm, a big, I'm not a big practitioner of it, but I do know enough <laughs> to go ahead and go ahead and get some stretching out. It's like mm -hmm. okay, yeah, I I know I know there's a technique for what I'm uh, feeling right now. So let me go ahead and find that and take care of it because and that's the balance. You know, you have to find the right time for everything. And and unfortunately, you know, drawing it takes a lot of time to get to get that talent at the level that you want it in. It takes a long time. And so we want that to see those results right away. Even to this day, I still want to mm -hmm. see like, nah, I want that drawing to come out right the first right time. Right now. And, yep. and yeah, yeah. So you sit there trying to figure it out. And then before you know it, it's been several hours since you moved. And mm -hmm. uh, and so you have to remember those things. You have to try to, to add that to your collection of things that you do today. Very important. Mm -hmm. uh, we got some pretty great uh, comments here. Sam Peterson says, honestly, in the beginning, um, it was all the pursuit of just trying to get really good at a skill and joy. This is uh, his answer to like why he creates mm -hmm. art um, mm -hmm. and what his drive is. He says, trying to see how far he could level up, and that was exciting mm -hmm. on his right. own. He says, within the past year, though, it shifted heavily towards finding a project that I feel like really speaks to me more than any other has, and now making that a reality is a huge drive. That's awesome. That's, right. That's awesome. Yeah. Correct. Yep. Uh, yep. Justin is saying, I continue to... I enjoy continuing to excel and improve in my craft. I love pushing the bar so you don't stay stagnant and create and continuing uh, to not do the same thing every day. Love it. Um, let's see what else we got. Um, uh, it's always good to take breaks, says Justin. Uh, and breaks from your work uh, when you're just stuck and it's one in the morning. Just go to bed. So much more worth it. I, you know, I can honestly say I am really bad at uh, sometimes feeling like um, if, a, if, a, if a painting is not going my way, I, I sometimes fall into the trap of thinking that if I just spend more time on it right now, mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. it will get better. Um, mm -hmm. And it's that's not always the answer. Um, I highly recommend uh, if you're stuck on a painting and you're just you're at that point where you're just like sick of looking at the thing and it's not coming along quite how you originally envisioned. Um, first, if you if you don't have the time or the luxury to change up um, what you are doing, like kind of change your schedule, get up and walk away, flip your canvas, first of mm. all. <laughs> flip that canvas horizontal yeah. and then see what you think because that can work. Um, but if, if you do have the time and luxury to kind of get up, take a stretch, you know, and, and get away from your work, for a little bit, um, I, you know, do it because when you don't, when you don't do that, you don't take a, a visual breath from what you're working on. Sometimes mm -hmm. you find that looking at things way too long really does kind of ruin a painting. And I've done that so many times. I can't tell you how often, uh, mm -hmm. where I just, I stare at something for so dang long that it starts kind of like when you look at a word and all of a sudden you don't know how to spell it. Or right. it, you look at a word so long it doesn't look right. It's the same thing with painting. Sometimes you look at that thing for so long that nothing looks like you've painted it correctly and you have to take a visual breath, a visual cool down from looking at it. You really do. Yeah, yeah, you have to. And, and if you have the time, you know, work on it on the next day. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, in that time in between, you know, while you're, while you're taking a shower or you're out for a walk, the idea will hit you and what is it that that artwork is missing mm -hmm. it'll come to you you won't even be thinking about it anymore and it's like oh i get it i understand what happened and, but uh, you won't have those moments until you step away yep. until you actually step away from the drawing you won't have those moments where it'll come to you so yeah you have to have those breaks in between uh and, and when things are working hey just stay with it just roll keep going yeah. You, you'll be in the shower in four hours and be like, Eureka! Yeah. I got it! I yeah. needed to add orange to the top left corner, yeah. and it's done. Like, you know, you, you, it, it comes to you. 
Um, and another thing that you can do um, that's really cool is kind of like, um, uh, if you've ever heard of like a palate cleanser when it comes to mm-hmm, food mm-hmm, or, mm-hmm. Uh, uh, you know, when you go, like if you've ever been into like a perfume section or a perfume store, they usually have like right. little uh, cups of coffee beans sitting mm-hmm. on the shelf because you smell a scent, then you need to smell something else and then smell another scent before you can really um, judge that scent properly. Mm-hmm. Um, sometimes I have little mini palate cleansing projects that mm-hmm. I do in between. That's right. You know? Yes. Yes, you need that. You need that, especially uh, when when it com- when it comes to client work. You know, you have to stay so focused and produce that thing that they're hiring you for. And it's really sometimes you just need to go ahead and draw a skull yeah. or draw something else, something that you enjoy, so that so that um, you're not sitting there staring at this thing this whole time and uh, and, and let the emotion, the negative emotion, uh, start taking over. So you got to find. Go back to that thing that brought you into drawing. What is it that you like? Maybe even move from digital and, and start and, and break out the the acrylics and paint something, yeah. uh, or draw something with a pencil. Whatever it is, you yeah, you need that palette cleanser. You need that something to re- help you reset and remember that. Oh yeah, that's why I like drawing. Mm-hmm. Not just the money, but because I because enjoy it. Because it's so fun. <laughs> I, I cannot tell you how many times I've stopped in middle of client work just to draw Kylo Ren or Darth Vader. Um, mm-hmm. right, right, right. At which point, like, one of my family members will come and be like, this again? And I'm like, listen, <laughs> you do you, and I'll right. do me. All right, fam? Yeah. I yeah. I got this under control, mostly. Uh-huh. <laughs> I got, <laughs> I sort of have this under control, just, you know. Uh, mm-hmm. But, yeah, I, I do that a lot. I, I'll stop, and I'll be like, you know what? This isn't working. How can I make it work? Uh, and usually... Uh, taking a break, taking a step back, drawing something yeah. a little bit different. That's that's mm-hmm. all you need. Because uh, you're right. We, we got into this because it's it's in our hearts, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. No matter which way you, you flip it, you know, artist's heart is a very uh, incredible thing. And uh, we create for a specific purpose. Uh, and that's mm-hmm. another thing that I have said before, and I'll say it again. Um, for anyone out there that is worried that they might not be good enough to be an artist, you know, that they might not have what it takes to be an artist. The f- simple fact that you have this, like the the spirit of art, that you know, that, that, that inherent kind of spiritual almost desire and urge to create something with your hands or to breathe life into something from your mind, you already are meant for it. That's right. I can't. Yep. I can't stress that enough. It's already yeah. in you. You're mm-hmm. already ready to do it. You just have to do it. And and I think you said earlier, um, Dan. Sometimes you sit down to do things, and you're like, "Gosh, this is taking forever. I just want this done now." I mm-hmm. promise you, no matter how long you do artwork, no matter how seasoned you become, that doesn't go away. So if you're feeling that, don't let that be the thing that discourages you from doing art. Because you kind of right. always sit down to make a painting and you're like, man, <sighs> if I could just, <laughs> uh-huh. you know, yeah. that's always there. Yeah. Um, yeah. So don't let that discourage you. Just, you know, you let your uh, let your imagine imagination run free and just do, just do it, guys. Right. Yeah. It is, uh, we do art because we enjoy the process. And uh, and so if any time you don't enjoy that process anymore, then you have to change the way you think about it. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and art is a very emotional thing. And so if you're not, if you're not happy, your art may not come out happy. Mm-hmm. If uh, you're not feeling that peace, your art may not come out at peace. Sometimes, you know, you need art when you are stressed out. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and, and it, it's, but, but you have to pay attention to yourself and your emotions and to why you're doing it and what is it that you're doing that will help fuel what kind of art you do and and give you that push and motivation to go ahead and keep trying or even uh, be okay with your art style. There's mm-hmm. an artist, I, used to, I, I have a ton of podcasts on uh, iTunes called Art is King Ooh. and I've interviewed over a hundred artists. And when one artist was telling me about uh, his, uh, his school days and, uh, and his professor came up to him and looked at his artwork and he says, you either got to decide that um, clean up that artwork and that comic book drawing style and make it cleaner or say that's your art style. Mm-hmm. And so my friend said, well, from then on, that became an art style. You know, <laughs> and, 
<laughs> Let me tell you, art comes in all types of looks, styles, techniques. Um, it doesn't matter. It's, uh, if it works for you, it let it work for you. You know, you can always strive. I can always strive to draw like you and paint like you, mm -hmm. voodoo veil. But <laughs> at the end of the day, you know, uh, and we were talking about this before, at the end of the day, I, I may start off, you know, trying to emulate your art style. And at the end of the day, I end up with a lot more lines than you would ever use on your drawing. Yeah. You know, and it's like, okay, cool. Well, that's my style. And I may just try out other things. But at the end of the day, I, I, I think you should be happy with what you're able to produce and just look at it as, well, this is the stage that I'm in. I'm in the blue stage or the blue period. You know, I'm in the line period. I'm in the comic book style period. Yeah. I'm in the manga period, whatever. You know, five years from now, you'll be drawing something else. And, uh, and you wouldn't even remember that you were not happy about the kind of art that you were producing before. Yep. And, and don't we always, don't we always raise the bar on ourselves? Like yes. every dang month or year, it seems like I, 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 I can't tell you how many times I've thought to myself, gosh, I'm just simply not good enough. And mm -hmm. then I, and then I remember I've always said this to myself and yet look how far I've come, you know? Right. So that means that it's not me that's not changing. It's my own expectations of myself. And so if you right. can keep a good handle on having healthy expectations of yourself, yes. then you will succeed and you'll be happy, you know, doing, doing that art. Um, and uh, I think healthy that was like the biggest thing. Yeah, healthy expectations is a big yes. deal because yeah. I did not always, um, I did not always have healthy expectations of myself. Um, mm -hmm. And it, 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 it came back to bite me a lot of times. Right. I, I read somewhere, uh, probably Twitter, uh, <laughs> <laughs> that it said, uh, you know, uh, remember uh, when you were born and how long it took you to walk. You know, so it takes you. I have a one-year-old uh, granddaughter. Mm -hmm. You know, she's crawling. She's crawling fast now, but she's still crawling. It's like, well, she's only a year old. So when you start on this artist career, creative career, it's not like you're within months, days, weeks, you're going to knock it out the park. It's going to take a year, two years, however long it took you to walk. It's going to take you that much time, you know, or, or something relative to that where that, that's going to get your art skill to that level that you're running now. Mm -hmm. We're not born running. It takes time. It takes uh, 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 practice. And, and that's how you have to look at it when you're drawing to. Yeah, I, I absolutely agree. Um, and uh, I think, too, you, you kind of were... Um, discussing earlier like the emotions uh behind things um and i, I do also want to say uh, kind of what we were discussing beforehand we had a lot of talks beforehand guys let me tell you <laughs> we had some we had some good conversations um mm -hmm. I, I i think that uh you know one of my biggest things when it comes to like the evolution of my artistic emotion um, mm -hmm. uh, in my, mm -hmm. my art journey was learning how to take constructive criticism. Um, and I, I, I have to say you're not, you know, cause sometimes when people take constructive criticism badly, we think, wow, what a, you know, what a rude person, or it's, it's hard for us to not have a bad feeling when we get a bad reaction from somebody right. in the midst of, mm -hmm. uh, of, of criticism. Uh, and I have to say, guys, you know, I, I understand that bad feeling. I understand getting angry because since we are, um, you know, kind of creating from our hearts, it's very, very easy to take constructive criticism as a personal attack, right? Yeah. Because yep. we are creating um, from our souls, and and we're trying to put we're trying to put something that we love down on paper. And sometimes we know it didn't come out right, you know, but we post it <laughs> anyways. Sometimes yeah, we yeah. know, but as somebody as soon as somebody calls us on it, then we're like, you know what? I I, I meant to. I meant yeah. I meant to do that. I meant you know, um, yeah. but. You know, when somebody gives you constructive criticism, especially on the internet, because it can be very, very hard um, to get constructive feedback instead of just getting feedback, or to get constructive criticism instead of just getting mm -hmm. criticism, because the internet is a very interesting place. Um, mm -hmm. Try to take it with a grain of salt, um, and 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 learn to uh, uh, be positive when it comes to understanding what people are saying about your work. Um, for me, I had to really sit down and think and digest everything that people said to me about my work um, when they did criticize. Otherwise, it was very easy for me to become upset. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah. you do get past that. So if any of you are stuck in that sort of rut, I got to say, um, that does 
uh, if as long as you you know keep your your mind on maintaining healthy practices in that regard, yeah. that something uh, is something that too does um, uh, get a lot easier to, to deal with. Um, find the art mentor, find other artists to hang out with and yes. uh, and ask them to look at your work and uh, ask them on purpose to, to tell you what you can do better. Mm -hmm. uh, and that that would also help find your your um, your middle ground for when somebody says something really great about your work and your head don't get doesn't get you have to make sure that your head doesn't blow up too big. Yeah. And and then hearing the negative stuff, too. And uh, and you don't let your your soul and heart get crushed. You 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 it's, it's that practice of interacting with other artists, talking to other artists. Um, and, you know, right now we the, the most we hang out we can do is going to be uh, online. But at some point, being around other artists and seeing their work and them seeing your work and then asking honest questions about your work mm -hmm. is uh, it's going to help you find that medium where um, you're able to take that criticism and uh, and still feel like, OK, cool. I learned I learned from that. Uh, watch me come back harder. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I like yeah. that. I like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Um, I do want to point out uh, we are coming to the end uh, of the stream here pretty quickly. I can't believe it. Um, it's 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 already been uh, a fair bit of time uh, already. However, um, I am going to kind of put a um, a little uh, I suppose a, a PSA out there. Um, uh, if anyone has created any work alongside us, um, now is the time uh, to kind of start uh, posting it on social media with the hashtag Adobe Life Design Off. I'm going to give us a couple minutes here, and then I am going to uh, pull up uh, the work uh, and see if anyone has created anything. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. If you have not created stuff, I understand we only got one show with the wonderful Dan uh, this week. So um, if you have not finished anything, first of all, it doesn't have to be finished. You guys know I say this every week. It doesn't have yeah. to be a finished, perfect masterpiece of epicness. Um, I just love <laughs> to see that you guys created with us, and I want to see what you did, you know. Um, but uh, if you guys do want to put a little more work into anything that you created along with the myths and legends theme for the show, uh, I always scour that hashtag during the week just to make sure yeah. I don't uh, miss anybody, and I will retweet um, and. And, uh, and share if you guys decide to post it a little later on. So that is cool. Um, and yeah, so why yeah. Don't, how about in the meantime, why don't, I'm going to full screen over onto your piece real quick, um, and I'm going to take a look uh, at your work that you created. Maybe you can hmm. kind of, yeah, we can kind of got a full screen view so we can look at what you did nice. for the segment. Yeah, yeah. Well, of course, I like drawing myself, and right now I have a beard. It took me years to go ahead and be okay with my bald head and shave it all off. And uh, so that beard and bald head is my look, is my thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then, and so anytime I draw myself, boom, it's easy, right? The bald head, the beard. And then, <laughs> of course, now, and then my ass to God. And so I added a few elements of my ass to God that's got the polka. Right now I'm merging all my layers so that I can clean up some more stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I like working with uh, the sketch first. Just go ahead and do a quick sketch. Just uh, get the idea out. I, I have to be honest, I did not take any art classes. I did not go to art school. I just learned by watching others and asking tons of questions. Same. So, yeah. That, <laughs> yeah. Uh, and so my first step is shapes. Like, what is the shape here? What am I, what am I going to draw? And so I start with the shapes. And a lot of times, I just go ahead and sketch fast so that I don't stare at the blank page for too long. Mm -hmm. you, know, you, don't wanna, you don't want that blank page to talk to you and mock you. So you go ahead and start sketching something now and then um, and now that I know what I want I start adding details I start adding my uh, my my sure lines I don't forget exactly what that term is the lines that you're gonna keep and um, and then from there boom tons of layers to go ahead and get some of the major elements in the drawing and uh, and then once I have the major elements boom turn off my sketch and I can go in and detail more and like I said comic books are my um, inspiration has been my my, my education when it comes to drawing. So everything has a line. There's bold lines everywhere. And, uh, and so then I add more lines for the detail. And what I would have done here from here with more layers with color, just to go ahead and flesh it out, get the primary colors. Aztec artwork is all about the primary colors. And, uh, and so, and then from here, I'm in fresco. I would 
take this into Illustrator mm -hmm. and uh, and then to put the whole power of Illustrator into it. Maybe add some text, say something like Draw Daily or Art Life, and um, and then uh, the gradients, uh, the, the freeform gradient and Illustrator. I really love that. And so that's that's where I would have gone, and that's my process. And I just try to, of course, today we didn't have a whole lot of time, but I try to draw pretty fast. I can't sit there and stare at a drawing too long because then I'll get tired. I'm the and same. Bored. Yeah, I'm the same. I have a lot of unfinished artwork just sitting there calling my name. All right, I'll I'm gonna. Through. If I we are running out of time, I'm sorry to okay. get you off, but I'm gonna Let's bump go. over here and I'm gonna peek at mine real quick, and then we're gonna pull yes. up the. Uh, other stuff. So I actually did. I'm surprised. I did. Uh, I tried to do lines today. Um, oh, Because nice. you were talking about um, thinking <laughs> about doing paintings and stuff. So I ended up doing lines, and then I did like a painterly, cool, like kind of background, which I uh -huh. don't know where it came from, but I really, really <laughs> love. So um, I started this uh, kind of like a bust of Anubis, which I thought was super fun to do. And I'm gonna finish mm -hmm. this and kind of post it on social media when I'm done. But then I got like the uh, this little frame Ooh, of like that looks crazy sky, you know. And then mm -hmm, I got mm -hmm. the Anubis um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, name at the bottom there. So that is what I did and then I'm gonna pull up the social media because we did get a piece of artwork from Laura Steneva today um, this mm. is what she was working on while we were uh, illustrating today I'm not sure if it goes along with our theme but I really appreciate you showing us what you were chipping away at while you were watching mm -hmm. the broadcast so thank you very much Laura I'm gonna go ahead and give you a like and give you a retweet here uh, so thank you so much. Uh, yeah. Kind of refresh and see if anything else came through. Yeah, Chad Rolfs drew us both. Yes. <laughs> yes. Oh, what? my gosh. He what? drew both oh. of us. Myths what? and Legends, DTM and Voodoo Val. You, oh, man. This, that's uh, great. Oh, that's so cool. I like it. <laughs> this is great. Thank you so much uh, for illustrating us. That is so wicked. I'm going to also retweet this. And anybody else, if you guys did not get your work in by the end of our broadcast, fear not, I will be checking that hashtag. Uh, and I'm sure that Dan will uh, peek yes. at it too. Um, and yes. I personally, I'm going to I'm gonna retweet and kind of give you guys a shout out and a thank you. Um, so thank you guys so much for joining us today. I uh, appreciate the patience with our audio um, this morning. You guys are, you guys are wonderful. Uh, troopers for that um thank you dan so much for joining me today it was an absolute pleasure working with you man it really was uh, you're very welcome i'm happy to be here and have a good time drawing things that i like to draw and talk about the things that i like to talk about yes thank that's you. my thing thank too you. i love it i knew we were gonna vibe i knew we were that's right. uh chat everyone in chat thank you so much uh, for, for watching today, and thank you to Sam Peterson, our fabulous moderator, uh, for keeping us all in line, for keeping us all uh, all straight and narrow. I appreciate you guys, uh, but we do have to take off. So until next time, folks, thank you all. Adios, See you on the internet. Woo! Peace.